traders, I'm excited to share several new ideas with you today, all of which I believe could have significant directional moves. But just before I do that, I wanted to share a trade that I took last week with you because I think there's a lot that could be learned from it. So you'll remember last week that one of my top ideas was a breakout long in Tesla, and um, it's actually on my week, on my list again this week. Um, but while that idea gained momentum during the last two days of last week on the long side, and I, I made money on the long, I also went short the stock on Wednesday and profited. Now, here's the lesson that I wanted to share with all of you. Now, as I mentioned last week, during the watch list, the long idea, I believe, was a bit crowded, and that made me hesitate for a long, working out very seamlessly and, and, and just easily. But I kept it on my list because from a technical point of view, I really liked the setup. But by remaining open-minded and flexible, I could use that information gathered from the breakout idea and specifically the idea not triggering, all right, so not breaking above that key resistance level to get long, trapping eager some early longs that were predicting rather than reacting, key levels, potential stop zones, and areas of intraday influxes, injections of supply, all right, from people being stopped out and having to sell their positions to go short for a momentum long. So here's the trade that I took last week, which really um, explains all of this in, in greater detail and from a visual perspective. So I got short at the prior day low for a momentum short breakdown, really as the first entry in this position and to test it out. It worked very nicely. I took my momentum covers, left on a small piece, um, and added a very small amount just to remain in the position. As it bounced, I had noticed that support had now turned into resistance. And once we broke the small bearish wedge pattern, I looked to add back my earlier covers. What I took off here, I added that back. My stop was now placed above this high. So keeping it momentum in terms of using lower highs as my area in which I'm wrong and therefore my stop is placed. The next area of interest was the 232 key level of support on the daily chart. We traded seamlessly down into that level. I never took any covers because I was looking to add if we broke down, which we did at 232, so I added twice. I got to full size, and then from there onwards, I just had um, systematically, I was covering on weakness, so basically I had small bids incrementally um, every certain amount in which the stock traded low. I was covering a very small portion systematically of my position, and I got completely flat once I noticed a change in character. What was that change? That was this trend break right here, and that was on this candle around 11.30, you can see that we broke this extreme down tr downtrend. We had a bit of a volume spike and a candle which engulfed the last five or six minutes or so. Um, and so for me, that was the reason to exit my trade in which I took my size off there after systematically covering there. Um, so this is a really good example of, of a momentum trade. And originally, I wanted to go long. I had a plan to go long. However, it didn't trigger and therefore, I didn't go long, all right? Instead, I went short because I recognized that the longs who did not wait for confirmation were potentially stuck in the trade <clears throat> and support was about to give way, providing a really good opportunity for momentum short. Now, the following day, I actually did a similar trade in Tesla, but that was to the long side. Um, and Tesla now, I believe, is actually set up better than it was last week on the long side for a swing long. So, Let's move straight on to some fresh ideas for the week. And as I just mentioned, Tesla is my main idea in terms of my swing ideas for the week. Because after a very quick move lower, below support, below 232s and running some stops, you know, shaking the tree, as they say, it's now reclaimed all of its key moving averages. And it's held above the consolidations resistance above this 247-ish area. And we closed above 250 and above this downtrend resistance. So everything looks pretty good in Tesla for momentum to continue to the upside. As they say, from a failed move lower comes a fast move higher potentially. So let's see. So I'm looking for dips, higher lows, and steady support over 250 for a long entry, and I'll place my stop below Friday's low. Um, and I'm targeting move towards 260 first target to take off a little bit of size to lock in some profits, and then I'll discretionarily leave some on for third and a bit of a loftier target around 270. I'm going to trail my stop using 
the hourly time frame and higher lows, as you know, that is how I like to usually do it. And apart from Tesla, some other backbone ideas, these are ideas that I've set alerts for, for the upcoming week. Um, and if price triggers, if volume triggers, um, then I'll have my eyes uh, more actively watching the stock and price action. Um, but the first one will be in UPST, in Upstart. Um, Upstart I like because it's put in an impressive inside day on Friday. Obviously, we have some momentum to the upside. We have abnormal and unusually high short interest in the name. Um, so it is setting up for potential continued momentum and a breakout higher. Um, if we can get above Friday's high, um, we could get potential continuation to 50. So I have some alerts set for the upper part of the range of Friday's move and Friday's high. And if that goes off and volume is sustained, um, I'll be looking for some momentum longs and a potentially a swing long towards 50. Quad C, CCCC, an exceptional mover on volume, exceptional, exceptional price surge last week on what could be potentially fundamentally changing news. It remains to be seen in the long run. Um, but in the short term, it definitely appears to be on the backside for now. And therefore, I have some alerts set for pops into 550, up into 6, and to see if this can put in intraday a failed move higher um, to be able to get short and target a move back down towards Friday's low and into the mid fours. And then lastly, last week and the previous week, we saw a number of pumps get liquidated. GGHG was one. MSS was another from Friday. So a couple of the ones that are last standing for me that I'll be keeping an eye on is EJH, which is one that could potentially be, be liquidated in the coming days or weeks. And ZJ, ZJYL is another one. And so I just have some alerts in price and volume alerts set for these names. Um, because once volume comes in, once price confirms, then they could definitely have some wild moves lower. Um, guys, that is it for me for this week. And I hope you all have a brilliant week. Good luck. And I will see you next week. So you're an active trader, not doing as well as you want not doing as well as you deserve and you just can't figure out why you can't become profitable no matter how hard you try well let me show you why this is your competition the traders in this room this room right here is full of elite traders some of whom are making seven and even eight figures a year in fact our top guys have made nearly 20 million each in net trading profits in a single year let's head to my office so i can share more so you're probably used to seeing videos of lavish trader lifestyles, trading gurus, trading off of a laptop for an hour a day, heck, maybe even 15 minutes a day, and then them relaxing on some secluded beach for the rest of the day. Well, all I can tell you is that our traders train like pro athletes. They live and breathe the markets and are continually working on their trading skills. Because at our firm, that's what we found it really takes to make it in this game. I'm Mike Bellafieri, co-founder and managing partner of SMB Capital, one of the world's top proprietary trading firms located in Midtown Manhattan. And we're always looking for trading talent to hire and develop. And not just to trade in-house on our desk, but also to trade from their own home, entirely using our firm's capital. And we have numerous traders doing just that allowing them to make upwards of seven figures trading the firm's capital without risking their own money. But to even get a shot at something like that, you need to have the right training. That's why we're doing a new free online presentation in which we share how you can get an interview with SMB to become an in-house or remote trader, trading firm capital without risking yours and gaining access to all of our firm's coaching and resources. And the best part? you don't have to be a profitable trader yet. In fact, we prefer to mold profitable traders with our methods and our techniques. That's why we have just three simple criteria that can earn anyone an interview. We're looking for highly ambitious and determined traders who fit our culture first and foremost. So if you believe that could be you, sign up for the free one hour online presentation by clicking the link that's in your top right corner of your screen now.